I'm gonna encourage you, the righteous are as bold as a line. If the Lord is with you, and he is, Jeremiah 42, 11, the Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? If, you, if you've died with Christ, I've died with Christ, if people start attacking me on social media, Facebook, YouTube, by the way, I got two strikes on YouTube, and then that warning, and they're like, one more and you're out of here. So anyway, so we started Drenda on Guard as a new YouTube channel. The, the, uh, the staff came to me and they go, Pastor Drenda, would you care? We're afraid you've got like 4 million views on one of your other uh, things about the Holy Spirit. Would you care if we started Drenda on Guard and we can talk about all the other issues you talk about there so that way we start from ground zero again? <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's fine with me. Then when I get three strikes, we're at rumble only. So anyhow, because I'm not gonna shut up, amen? When people's lives, when people's lives are at stake, how can we remain silent, right? So I want you to see Amy Vino's story, then we're gonna pray, but check out Amy's story. I think it'll bless you. And I think, look at this not as just having children, but look at this as Satan lies to us, hurts our lives, and that you, every one of you are carrying a vision in you not just a baby, but women are seed bearers and seed carriers. You carry seed, you carry vision in you. Satan wants to attack it and lie to you. So check this out and we'll close. Probably seven years ago, my husband and I were introduced to um, Pastor Gary's teachings. Um, one of our friends, he was um, healed of uh, cancer. He had 40 days left to live and he was miraculously healed. And so we had known that story and so he introduced us to um, Pastor Gary's teachings and so my husband started reading his books and we started listening to the podcast a little bit. At that time we were actually living in Pennsylvania and um, my husband and I were married for a while and um, were trying to have a baby and so um, it you know kind of just thought it was gonna just happen. Didn't just happen and so um, months turned into years and at first it was really hard when I would see other people that just weren't even trying to have a baby and they would just get pregnant. You know, there were definitely some hard moments there that, you know, I would just feel like it seemed like everyone around me was just very easily having babies. And um, so there were definitely moments of deep discouragement just because I felt like, why isn't this happening for us? But. Um, during that time, that couple that was um, that the husband was healed from cancer, we had seen them at a, a conference, and um, the wife um, was just happened to be walking by me. I said, "Oh, hey!" and she kept walking at first, then she spun around real quick and she said, "Are you trying to have a baby?" And I said, um, "Actually, yeah, I am trying to have a baby." And she said, "Well, um, God wants you to know that it is His will for you to have a baby, and your victory is coming." and um, and I just broke down weeping and um, because we had just experienced a loss, um, a miscarriage, and so I was just really hurting and that was the first time I'd really ever heard anything like that. Her words just came at the right moment, it set me back a little bit because I was telling myself and people that, well, if it's God's will, I'll have a baby. And so that was different to me. And um, it kind of um, set me on this journey then to really just get into God's word to try to understand what she meant by that. I know for me, the thing that changed the most was just getting into the word of God every single day. And um, I, I had read the word of God before. In fact, I had pretty much read it every day before, but it wasn't like alive to me. But when we were believing for a baby, we, got into the Word. We were believing for revelation. We'd ask God to help us understand what this means and show, what it, show us what it means for this situation. I ended up reading a verse in Luke 11, and it basically says that, um, you know, what kind of father, if his son was going to ask for um, some bread, would give him a stone, or if he asked for a fish, would give him a snake. And I just, I felt God speak to me like, right, if I, if you ask me for a baby, I'm going to give you a baby. And so that was just one verse that really encouraged me in that, in that journey. 
after we did, you know, get pregnant. And so it was a super joyful time. We had waited for over three years. And so it just lifted the weight of all of that. I went in for my 20 week ultrasound um, to find out um, the sex of the baby. And um, I was shocked to find out it was a boy, but I was excited. I was had been so sure it was gonna be a girl. But when I uh, got back in my car to leave the appointment, um, the doctor's office called me and they just said, um, what are you doing right now? And at that time I was going back to work and said, well, I'm headed back into work. And they said, well, we need to talk to you right now. And so um, they told me that there were some things on the ultrasound that they were um, very concerned about and saw. And so they wanted me to come back in and do another ultrasound. So I went back in, did another ultrasound. And at that time they said that um, the baby had a hole in its heart, which I could see on the pictures. And um, they said some things about how the baby's eyes were set and um, they were too close together. And there were some other concerns that they had and that I needed to see a specialist. And so um, my heart just kind of sank, but thankfully we had been putting in so, so many teachings and so much of the word. And um, so I called my husband immediately and I just said, um, I have to go see a specialist. And he said, why? And I, and I said, well, I don't really want to say what they said. And, um, and we had known enough about the power of the spoken word. So we had to wait three days to get in for the appointment. And that felt like forever, um, but we took those three days, um, we prayed, my husband fasted during that time, and we just um, pumped teachings into us nonstop for three days. And um, we just, we were not gonna let this baby go. We knew that he was an answer to prayer. And so we just stood firm on that. I had to do a two hour um, internal ultrasound, which was extremely painful. Then the doctor took about an hour. They examined every single picture that they took. And again, it just felt like it was dragging on, but. Um, I was just imagining myself there, just praising God for the victory. And I just, I knew it was gonna have a good result and um, I could just like feel it inside. I didn't care what they were saying. And so he came in and um, he said, you know, I've never seen this, but I can't find what they were talking about. The, the hole in the heart has shrunk since they took the picture the other day. And he said, and you can see it right here. It's so, so small and it would not be my recommendation to do anything about this at this point. I was jumping up and down and I was just crying and I just, I knew what I knew, you know, and the rest of the pregnancy was definitely just amazing and joyful. And um, we have a beautiful baby boy and um, he'll be five years old next month. And so he's definitely our, our victory miracle baby. And um, when he was eight months old, um, I ended up finding out I was pregnant again already, and so we now have two boys, and so our second son is three and a half years old now. My husband for years had talked about moving one day, and I had never wanted to move, but we had started talking then about, you know, well, what, where do we want to raise our family? Like I said, we had already been listening to Pastor Gary's teachings and reading the books, and so we were like, what about Columbus? And so. We um, drove out here one weekend, checked everything out, and um, work situations worked out. Um, within three weeks' time, when my son was seven days old, we moved out here from Pennsylvania. And the first Sunday that we came to church here, and I just can't remember standing in there worshiping, holding him, and just being like, this is so surreal. Like, we are here, and we're here with this this beautiful baby. It has changed our life in so many ways being here um, and just being immersed in the church and being part of happy life groups and my husband's part of small groups and um, just really getting involved and really just understanding the teachings in a new way. And the good life is just a life of victory. And I feel like life used to be really hard and it always felt like we were going from thing to thing and difficulty to difficulty. But when we were able to believe for a baby and have that baby and then have a second baby and our finances completely changed and um, they've just gotten better every single year since we've been here because of the things that we've learned, um, that's the good life to us. The pressure, the pressure is coming off. Praise God. See, the enemy wants a lot of people so he can steal, kill, and destroy. And he uses these areas of influence. He infiltrates them because he knows people are looking at media. They want to be entertained. He knows they're going to have to get education or medical help at times or uh, that they, you know, they live in governments and all these things. So the enemy knows. 
And you young women, just be so wise to the enemy's schemes. The kingdom of God changes lives. It changes destinies. It gives people hope. It brings babies. It brings vision. It restores what the enemy tried to steal from you. And so tonight, I just want to encourage you. If like Amy, you were told, you know, this isn't going to happen, or you felt like it was God's will that you suffer through all these bad things, God doesn't want you to suffer. You don't want your kids to suffer. God's a good father. And like Amy said, he's not going to give a, you know, a stone or something bad to you, a scorpion. Uh, when you've asked him for the Holy Spirit, you've asked him for something good. So bring your heart, your needs, your desires to him. Believe his word. Study his word. Put it in your heart. And when you put it in your heart, it'll transform your thinking. The Bible says don't be conformed to this world's thinking but be transformed. So all these areas I mentioned to you that'll be in the book, the seven mountains and conquering those areas, climbing that mountain, I wanna encourage you. You are called by God. You have an assignment. And if you have just, you're new to this and this is your first time to be here, just receive and soak it in and grow and let God bring these amazing stories in your life. And then do like Amy, share it. Share it with someone. Uh, there's a scripture that says, he's turned my sorrow into dancing again. He's lifted my sorrow. I can't stay silent. I must sing for my joys come, right? And so his joy comes in you and it transforms life. And even when you go through some tough things, there's answers, there's, there's courage, there's encouragement. There's that love that you need when you need it. When nobody else can be there for you, God will always be there, amen? He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. There's times people can't give you that 80% is all they got. And there's 20%, you, you can't find that answer from anybody, but it's always in him and he's always there for you, amen? So I'm gonna challenge, encourage you. Yes, praise the Lord. He's so good, so faithful. Hi, I'm Drenda, and I've written a new book called Fight Like Heaven, a cultural guide to living on guard. I expose the seven mountains of cultural influence and how the enemy has invaded these areas and trying to bring them together to converge against the Lord. I expose the organizations, the people behind it, what's going on, the attacks against your children, against your health, your finances, our government, our families, our religion, and our way of living. And this is a God that is a must, and it is an urgent call to action. We need to hear and see what's going on, and then we need to act, and we need to fight like heaven and kick hell out. I encourage you, this is urgent. Get your copy today at Amazon or at drenda.com or fightinglikeheaven.com.